الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسله بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا ربي زدني علما قال الله تعالى في القرآن الكريم أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم صبغة الله ومن أحسن من الله صبغة ونحن له عابدون صدق الله العظيم In the journey of going over the ayahs from the Holy Quran we have come to the point where we are looking at ayah number 149 from Surah Al-Nisa and insha'Allah ta'ala after this ayah we will move on to Surah Al-Ma'idah In this ayah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says إِن تُبْدُوا خَيْرًا أَوْ تُخْفُوهُ If you do good deeds openly or you hide them. أو تعفو عن سوء So if you show good deeds or conceal it or if you may pardon if somebody does an offense. فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ عَفُوًا قَدِرًا Indeed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ever pardoned, ever pardoning and competent. Now if you look at the different aspects of this ayah, there are three main aspects that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about. First of all, promoting good deeds openly and in hiding. So you're not forced to do it in hiding and you're not forced to do it openly. You could do it either way. And then forgiveness for the others. That's a big aspect of the religion. And when as believers we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us, How is it that we want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive us but we are not willing to forgive anybody? That is itself a great contradiction. That a person is so hardened in his heart that he's not willing to forgive anybody. However, he wishes that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should forgive him. So if you really, really want Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you, start by forgiving others. Show some mercy towards others. When you are asking mercy from the most merciful. Moving on to the ayah number one of Surah Al-Ma'idah. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu. Those of you who have believed. Awfu bil uqood. When you make contracts or when you make promises, fulfill them. And that's, that's in itself is a big statement. Then whenever you sign a contract, whenever you make a promise or take an oath, you have to fulfill it. There's no ifs, buts, and whys in it. That's why you have to be careful when you're making promises. Otherwise, don't make promises. Don't give other people false hopes. In ayah number two, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَتَعَامَنُوا عَلَى الْبِرِّ وَالتَّقْوَى Communicate with each other, help each other out in the matters of goodness. وَلَا تَعَاوَنُوا عَلَى الْإِثْمِ وَالْعُدْوَانِ Do not help each other in the matters of sins. It doesn't matter how dear the person is to you. Do not cooperate with each other in the matters of sins. Now there are a lot of things people do under peer pressure and they know at the bottom of their heart it's a sin. And one of the common practices that we see around us is the use of drugs. Now drug abuse is a terminology that people use, but using of drugs itself is an abuse. Now there are drugs in pharmaceutical terms which are medications, that's a totally different deal. But using drugs otherwise as a leisure, as a way to pleasure yourself itself is abusing your system. So there is no limit that after this point it's an abuse. No, anything that ruins your health is an abuse. And it's not limited to those drugs that you and I are familiar with. It's limited, it includes anything and everything that's harmful for your heart, for your health, for your kidneys, for your lungs, for your system. So anything and everything that causes harm to you is something that is not lawful for you to use to start with. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do not feel this peer pressure in you that you follow these things. What's wrong is wrong. Do not feel the peer pressure in the wrong things. Now peer pressure in good things is a good way because that promotes goodness. 
So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala lays that foundation for us saying that do not cooperate with each other in such affairs. And at the bottom of your heart, وَاتَّقُوا At all times feel the God consciousness. The God conscious is very, very important. A lot of the time when you open the Qur'an and you come across these words, وَاتَّقُوا Right below that you see the word, and fear Allah. The word fear in English language, or even in Urdu language or other languages that you may speak, it gives you some negative annotation in your minds. And taqwa doesn't root from negativity. Taqwa roots from positivity. And you may be like, how taqwa has roots in positivity when the translations have the word fear? Because this is a good fear. This is a fear that springs from love. That you love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so much that you are afraid, you're fearful of displeasing Him. So anything that springs from love can be negative. But people shorten it up and say, fear Allah. And this basically goes back to being God conscious. In all walks of life, remember that He's all watching, all seeing, all knowing. You could hide it from the world, but you can't hide it from Him. And that's the message Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives over and over again. Anytime He says, Allah, Always remember the core of your heart. That Allah is all knowing, all seeing. He's watching you do all of these things. So sometimes our brain overwhelms these feelings and compels us to do certain things that we shouldn't do. Because we are listening to our brain a lot more than we are listening to our heart. So the heart is basically where the purification lies. Purify your heart and make your brain listen to your heart in making the decision. But first the heart needs to be purified. You need to take out those ill feelings from your heart. The hatred, the animosity, the anger, the wish for evil, the wish for sinning. All of these things spring from heart. And when you give yourself to the brain, the brain is a very rational thing. Its vision is very limited. If it finds something that it is beneficial for nafs, it says, go and grab it, it's beneficial for you. But the heart says, no, it is beneficial now, but it is sin. You have to pay a very heavy price in the real, in the, in the real life, the life hereafter. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Allah. Be God conscious in all walks of life. And remember, in Allah shadeedul iqab, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala penalizes you, the penalty is very severe. That's why on the day of judgment, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that, oh Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, when the book of deeds are given to us, after that we wish, we hope, we pray, that no questions are asked as why you did it. Because the moment the why book opens up, that's a trouble. Because certainly the why comes because we don't have any answer for it. If there was an answer for it, if there was a reason of the why, then why wouldn't be asked? So we really pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that day the book of deeds is given to us in a fashion that it is a certificate to enter the Jannah without any questions. May Allah help us live that kind of a life. And may Allah give us an opportunity to repent for our mistakes and our sins. Because all of these are very important components of life. Sometimes when we do not repent is when we do not realize our mistakes, we're not feeling guilty we are going harder and harder on ourselves. The heart hardens, the sinning increases, the repentance decreases, the doing of the good doesn't have flavor. You don't enjoy goodness anymore because the heart has hardened. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all merciful, wants us to have mercy in our heart. And the mercy springs from taqwa, the consciousness. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم